Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live. My name is Robert Gruler. I am a criminal defense attorney here at the r, &R Law Group in the always beautiful and sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, where my team and I, over the course of many years, have represented thousands of good people facing criminal charges. And throughout our time in practice, we have seen a lot of problems with our justice system. I'm talking about misconduct involving the police. We have prosecutors behaving poorly. We've got judges not particularly interested in a little thing called justice. And it all starts with the politicians, the people at the top, the ones who write the rules and pass the laws that they expect you and me to follow, but sometimes have a little bit of difficulty doing so themselves. That's why we started this show called Watching the Watchers, so that together with your help, we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight of accountability and transparency down upon our system with the hope of finding justice. And we're grateful that you are here and with us today because we've got a lot of news to get into. Busy Monday today. We're going to start off by talking about an update in the January 6 cases, the Capitol Hill protest cases. Prosecutors came out and released new data that is showing uh, surveillance footage, in fact, is what it is, came out from the prosecutor's office and it shows one particular angle, 40 minutes of time elapses from about 2.30 to about a half an hour, 40, 40 minutes after that. And so I've got a bunch of the clips. We're going to go through them and we're going to see what happened from inside the building, because a lot of this video has been floating around there in the government's hands, but they have not disclosed it to the defense. In fact, they've done everything possible to make sure the defense does not get this footage. It's now out there. That means we got to go through it. So we are going to go through it and take a look at several of the different angles uh, from the day of the January 6th protest, the day America almost was over. So we'll take a look at that. Then in our next segment, in segment number two, we're going to be talking about Chicago PD. Chicago Police Department are getting into it with the mayor, Lori Lightfoot, out of Chicago. And so we're going to check in with what's going on there. There's a, a, a police union president. His name is Katan Zara. He has really basically communicated to all the different union members, don't follow the VAX mandates. Just don't follow it. Don't go and do it. And so Mayor Lori Lightfoot, very unhappy about that. So is a local court. They kind of silenced him. They said, uh, stop saying that on the Internet. And so he did something interesting in response. So a lot of the battle is taking place there in Chicago. And then in our final segment, we got to turn over to Kamala Harris. We are unfortunately going to have to play some Kamala Harris today on the show. I know it's a Monday and I know it's a bad way to start the week, but we it's you know, we got to do it. So she's got a she gave a message over the weekend in the upcoming days where she is a, a fish. She was communicating to over 300 churches a message. A message of Jesus? No, it was a message of Terry McAuliffe. Somebody should run uh, for office. She this is a, a, a Clinton compatriot who is running for office and Kamala Harris is endorsing this person in churches all over Virginia. Problem with that, many churches are 501c3 organizations and the question is, does Kamala Harris, does her political endorsement violate those laws, those rules? And so we are going to take a look at the U.S. Code, in particular 501c3. And so we've got a lot to get into today. If you want to be a part of the show, the best place to do that is over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com, which is where our chat is, where the show is live. We We've got a lot of people chatting away. We've got I'm Not Gas, Mustang Jeff, Joey Bandolero. We have playing hookies in the house. We have Dead Mouth 5. We have Joe, Joe Gum, G Gum. And we have KK. We have Jay Heath says, Yo, fam. We've got Trowel Pat all in the house, all chatting away over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. It's our lovely community. And if you're a member over there, you can participate in the show by using this form. This is where we take the questions as they come up throughout the day. And if you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else and you're looking for clips of the show, an easy way to just go get the clips, you can get those over at Robert Gruller ESQ Clips on YouTube is where we cut up all these different segments. So if you miss a part of the show, you can just navigate on over there and you'll never miss an episode. Isn't that really nice and fun? All right. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get into the news of the day. And I moved a bunch of screens around and so I'm all discombobulated. It's like sort of riding a bike backwards, but that's okay. We're going to, we're going to uh, barrel our way through it. What are we talking about in our first segment? January 6th. Let's talk about it. 
Prosecutors just released new video evidence in the January 6th Capitol Hill cases, and it's kind of interesting because we've seen a lot of footage thus far. If you're somebody who watches the mainstream media, I think they're still beating that horse to death. It is October now, and that horse is still being beaten into the ground. They're never going to let up with it. And that's okay because there's a lot of interesting things that we can dissect. New video came out. This was something that was really battled over. Recall that there's something like 14,000 hours conservatively of video footage. Remember, the Capitol building is one of the most uh, supposed to be presumably secure buildings in the entire planet. It houses large portions of the U.S. government. So you'd guess that they have a lot of surveillance cameras uh, so that you can see what exactly is going on. Well, most of that footage has not come out, and a lot of people like me who think that there is probably more to the story behind January 6th have been pounding the table demanding that it comes out. Well, it's about uh, you know nine months later, and some of this is now trickling out. BuzzFeed, Zoe's Tillman, posted this story, says that new Capitol surveillance footage shows a breach by the January 6th rioters. And now, Zoe Tillman is over at BuzzFeed, and if you read her article, she's very, I would say, uh, sympathetic to the crowd that says that this day was almost the end of America. So if you read that article, you'll see that. But I want to ask, you know, was it really a breach? We're going to take a look at the footage. You tell me whether there was a breach in what we're about to see. Now, I have some clips. Each video is 40 minutes. Obviously, we're not going to sit here for 40 minutes. I've got some clips, but she gives us some background. She says this comes from two cameras that are mounted in the middle of a hallway between two sets of doors, one leading outside to the terrace, the west side of the Capitol, the other going up the rotunda. Two cameras face the opposite directions, recording events in both sides of the hallway. OK, that is a lot there. Right. And it's important before we dive into the actual footage that we understand the area that they're talking about. Because otherwise, it's just going to look like two hallways, and it's not going to make much sense. So let's take a look at the map. This is the Capitol building. You can see this is the area that Ms. Tillman was talking about. She says, uh, over here, you see the House of Representatives. They're on the south side. The Senate building is on the north side. You can see northbound uh, this direction. Upper west of the terrace interior view. You can see that this is where one of the cameras is. Upper West Terrace interior view, looking inside, so the angle is looking inside. Then we have another camera, Upper Terrace West exterior view, looking outside, so looking sort of down the stairwell. And so we're going to see both of those cameras sort of, uh, there's a hallway, one camera's looking this direction, the other camera's looking this direction in the hallway, and you're going to see people walking through it, but it's really one continuous hallway uh, more or less. We have another angle here. You can see that this is, again, we're talking about the west side of the building. This is the, I think, the first floor of the or the upper level, which would be sort of where they're at. You can see the west side shows us some stairwells. We've got the House Gallery entrance. We've got the Senate Gallery entrance. And you, you can sort of see gift shops and all of that other stuff there at the Capitol. This is the same uh, picture, the same angle. But again, this is the west side. So uh, north is not north on the screen here. North is actually west, so north is this direction. This is the west side. We saw a lot of the rioters sort of marching their way up these steps up into the front of the Capitol, right? This is where all of those pictures were. A lot of the, you know, the rioting that we saw in the media was all coming up the west side of the building. A lot of people were saying that there was some other finicky business going on around the east side. East side is where a lot of the business takes place. And so you, this is where uh, Congress people actually go in and out of the buildings and all of it. It's, it's less of a facade. It's more accessible. It's more utilitarian on the east side, whereas on the west side, that's where a lot of the people were storming the Capitol. Right. And so uh, if you if you zoom in on the Capitol and we connect that same uh, right back to the map, you're going to see that this is the front facade. This is the west side of the Capitol if you've never been there. And you're going to notice that when we zoom in a little bit and we can almost target exactly what Zoe Tillman was pointing out on the map, almost looks like this is the door that they went into right here in the middle of the Capitol building. And so it sort of matches up. If you rotate the, um, the image that was on BuzzFeed, if you rotate that around so that north is facing north, just like it is here. So this, this way is north. This is the west facade. Then we have upper west, the terrace here. And so both angles are going to be coming from that direction. OK, so now that we know where it is and it matches a lot of the same footage that we saw about, you know, all of the, the, the police, that's where a lot of the battle took place. Sort of like in the movie Braveheart, right? When two sides of the battlefield just come clashing in together, we saw a lot of that on the west side. But where did this footage come from and why did it just take, you know, 10 months to get out? Well, it's a good question. 
Well, it's because the Justice Department under Joe Biden has been fighting it being released for a long time. We can see here that Julie Kelly wrote about this over at American Greatness, posted this October 18th, says that now, over the objection of Joe Biden's Justice Department, lengthy video clips showing the U.S. Capitol Police allowing hundreds of people into the building on the afternoon of January 6 has been released to the public. In July, Ethan Nordine, an alleged Proud Boy member charged for various crimes, is now held in Seattle jail awaiting trial. He petitioned the court to remove the highly sensitive designation on the surveillance video. Okay, so in other words, the court said, oh, this is too sensitive. We cannot let this out. But a different group called the Press Coalition, comprised of CNN, New York Times, three other major broadcast networks, they filed a motion to intervene in Nordine's case and make the video public. And guess what? They did make it public. Very interesting. So let's take a look at the actual video footage itself. So we can take a look at this first image. Uh, this is actually two sets of videos. So you can see here, upper upper west terrace exterior or the upper west terrace interior and so we saw both of these and let's take a quick look at how this is how this plays out so let me frame this out a little bit better i've got four different video clips here today and you're going to sort of we're going to walk through the progression it's all from the same hallway four different times the entire sequence is 40 minutes obviously we're not going to watch 40 minutes of footage here i have about i would say about four minutes of footage that we will actually go through but it's going to go through sort of a, a four-part sequence we're going to see empty halls that start to get filled with police officers then we're going to see sort of a, a crowd uh, bustling around in, in near the hallway near the entry of the west terrace then we're going to see a little bit bigger crowd and then we're going to see kind of the dam break. We're going to see something happen where everybody who's outside in the exterior hallway, they are moving inside a little bit way that's organized, kind of a nice organized fashion. So we'll take a look at that, so that, that sequence, that progression, and just see how it works. So this is the first of, that, of the four videos. And we'll take a look. Let's watch it. Now, there's no sound. So let's make sure this is playing here. All right, and you can see not much activity. The clock is ticking there. The time is 2.33.13, and you'll look. This is in the interior of the building. The door's open. This is down near the bottom. The door's open. Looks like a police officer is standing there. This is at 2.30, okay, and there are already what looks like protesters and rioters inside the building. Unless that's a tour, I don't know what's going on over there. A lot of people, but then some people are walking out now. So some people are walking up, maybe they're leaving the tour and they walk right out that front door. See that up the upper west terrace exterior. So they walk from inside the building and they go right outside the west terrace exterior, which presumably is, is you know, near the door that I showed you on the map some, some time ago. So now people are kind of coming and going. The protesters walk out he's now holding the door he's got his uh, you know american flag there and so this is at 233 234 people are coming and going as they please okay so take a look at this it says january 6 234 14 seconds that was one minute 234 14 seconds p.m so they're both there and it's kind of a free-for-all. doesn't look like a bunch of madness and, and mayhem. So then we take a look at, we, we fast forward a little bit. So remember, we just finished here at 2.34. Let's move ahead two minutes to, we finished at 2.34. Now we're going to be at 2.36. So we fast forward a couple minutes and the scene changes a little bit, right? Now we see a lot more people are piling into this door. So we'll pick it up right here. And you're going to also see same building, Upper West Terrace exterior, or a different, you know, a different inside. This this very well could be a different door. But watch. Cops, four cops are just standing right there. Four or five cops. It's 2.37 now. And people are coming and going. Uh, opening another door so that, you know, more people in the crowd can come in. Cops aren't doing anything. 2.37. And then we'll see over here, now all of these, let's take a look. So we can sort of connect, this, this is all the same door, all right? So now I'm, I'm scrolling through here because I didn't catch this on the first watch. But so look, this is all the same door. So 
uh, watch these boxes. So this is 233, 236. These boxes don't change, 233, 236. This box does move. So this box stays the same. This box moves, this box moves. And then it doesn't it doesn't change again. So those are the remainder of the clips. Yeah. So it's this is all now the same door, which is very interesting. This is I'm sort of uh, this is, this is not planned, but I'm just sort of observing this right now. Two thirty six people are coming through the doors, and we're going to see that they were kind of setting up shop. The other guy comes in and then opens up that second door near the top of the frame, and uh, that guy's got a gas mask on but very orderly and re recall about six minutes later earlier, people were coming out the other side, right? People were walking the other direction through the other door. And so that's at 236. We're gonna fast forward over to 240 now. We're gonna pick that up at 240 and watch this one. Okay, so now you see this guy stop up here at the front. So the police officer moves out from the, from the perch. Let's watch that one more time. So this police officer, you're going to see these look like protesters down here at the bottom that are walking their way through the door. Then we press play here, and we're going to see one officer stop. This guy just stops because this officer is now approaching him on the top of the frame here. Police officer is now talking. And if you notice at the front of at the start of this video down here, there were still people walking in the hall. This guy is now walking out, up, turns right around, up, nope, there are cops over there, <laughs> that's blocked, they turn right around inside, and then they go back inside and start walking back up the rotunda. So now you see, now this is at 240, and recall, just about two, at 236, there were a bunch of protesters who were just walking through. So now the cops come back out, and they say, oh, hold on, stop a minute, stop, wait, all right, and get, they, they oblige, they all stop, they're all waiting there. Look at the bottom frame, there's nobody walking back and forth at all. There aren't people who are just, you know, bouncing around. Now, this guy comes walking out, doesn't look like a police officer, looks like a MAGA guy or something or, you know, whatever, whatever they're framing these people as. And he just walks on right by the police. All right. Well, I guess I'm leaving. See you guys. Bye. Cops are free to go. Now, look, nobody is, is walking through there, right? Hallways are still empty. Time is 2.41 now, 13 seconds, 15 crowd looks like it's you know uh, this this gentleman is coming up to the police officer now and they're having a civil conversation that guy at the bottom frame turns walks out turns right around again now no violence now what you're expecting to see is a violent mob who's beating you know police officers over the head and you know i'm not saying that that didn't happen but that's not what we're seeing here they're having a conversation unfortunately we can't hear anything and so this conversation will continue on. It just goes on and on and on. So we're not going to uh, watch it indefinitely, but we are going to fast forward a little bit. So now let's pick this back up. We got one final clip. And so we're going to fast forward. That was at 240 and we're going to go forward another four minutes. And then here we are. Now, this is where the dam breaks. OK, this is part four. This is where you're going to see now the entry of the crowd into the Capitol building. But the crowd has already been in there. Okay, we saw them coming out that way in the first place. Watch this one. All right. So still, nobody is going back and forth in the hallway in the bottom frame. You're going to see two officers down at the bottom. You're going to see this, uh, this African-American guy with a mask on, bald head. And you're going to see this, this white fellow down here, not a bald head, leans in. There it is. Leans in, says something, taps his other buddy on the shoulder. They back up. And they start walking away, just walking slowly, backing up. This is a 244, and the crowd piles in. And they just walk in. So what was that? You see these three police officers. We're going to rewind this and watch this again. We have three officers. We have an African-American gentleman here. We have another one right here. And we have this police officer at the bottom. Taps in, leans in. Hey, something, something, something. Taps this other guy on the shoulder. Hey, we're out of here. Everybody was just walking in. They walk away and they just walk right in. They open the door for him.
<laughs> Here you go. Here, come on in, everybody. And everybody just piles in. Nice and slowly. Wow. Okay, well. I guess you can see why the Justice Department didn't want that video coming out. Because it shows a different side of everything, doesn't it? It shows... Uh, a lot less violence, death, destruction, insurrection, conspiracy, wrecking of America. That is all not in that clip that I just saw. Hmm. Now, why could that be? Did the officers get a stand down order? Did somebody call them and say, hey, uh, uh, we just shot somebody over there. There was a shooting that took place. And now um, I guess let everyone in. Is that where this goes? Hmm. We have an active shooter. We just had to execute a woman. So, uh, what? hey, uh, Lou, there's a dead girl here. Why don't you radio everybody and just tell them to let everybody else in the building? Yeah, just let him in. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, tell him. Uh, so he, he goes, taps his other bodies. Oh, I guess we're letting him in now. Was it because Pence was now safe or AOC was back in her? Oh, I, I, maybe she was never there, I think, in the first place. I don't know. But, you know, the question is, what was said right there and why was that said? Hmm, very curious. Let's see what you have to say about that over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Let's see if there's anything to talk about on this segment. Interesting stuff. We have some questions here. Let's pull this up. I told you my screens are all over the place today. We have a, a lot of people in the locals chat. This is more than I've ever seen, which is pretty cool. All right, we've got Oh, I didn't have this queued up. All right. Our first one here is from Hunter Biden. Of course, Hunter Biden's here says, I'm coming to you from your always dark dingy crack house in the basement. We got crackheads peeking out junkies all over the place. Oh gosh, poor Hunter. I hope he gets some help soon. Let's see what else we have. I'm not gas says, imagine if we stormed the beach in Normandy, like the protesters storming the beach on January 6th, Hitler would have surrendered instantly with how terrifying that was. That's true. I should have put a content warning on this segment because of that. Very violent, very, uh, very, very gruesome. You saw that. Did you, I know you couldn't hear it, but if you could have heard it, you probably would have heard like, uh, excuse me, can we come in there now? No, you can't. Oh, I guess then we'll just stand here then. All right. <laughs> and then you fast forward it and it goes, Oh, yeah, I guess now you can come in here. Oh, we can come in here? Oh, great. That sounds great. Thanks for your permission. I guess we'll see you inside. All right. So that was uh, another way that that probably sounded if you were listening close. Monster One says, got to say that I don't like this new setup. I can't watch and comment at the same time. Before, I would use the YouTube mini player and use a browser to submit questions. Now I have to exit the video to submit a question. Oh, that's for Monster One. Well, that's good feedback. Okay, well, listen, we're just trying it. It's a trial. If everyone hates it, then I can uh, make some adjustments. One thought to the adjustment might have been to set up a unlisted, a private YouTube stream so that we could still use YouTube and stream there. It just wouldn't be public. That way, after the show's over, I can then upload the, the, the actual recorded file as a premiere and not have the live stream. So that is a backup. So just because we're not on YouTube today doesn't mean that we won't always be on YouTube. Thank you for the feedback, Monster One. And I'm sure a lot of people agree with you. A lot of people are probably unhappy about this change. I'm sure of that. Former LEO says, is a malicious prosecution civil claim possible in federal court? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But is that going to go? You know, I don't know. Look. Yes, you could always file a claim or make a complaint, but let's just take a quick look here at the reality of what's happening on the ground. The January 6th protesters, the prisoners over there, they are not getting treated particularly well. The D.C. judges have not been sympathetic to their claims. Nobody who has looked at their cases thus far, except one judge, Royce C. Lamberth, who just held the D.C. warden and the D.C. Uh, prison uh, director of the prisons over there, in contempt. Nobody else thus far has done anything about it. So, yeah, I mean, you could go and make a bunch of claims that all of this is malicious. I don't know that it would be necessarily malicious. It, it, it depends on who they're charging. You know, if some of those people there were charged with trespassing, yeah, then I think that that might be something that doesn't have enough, even probable cause to bring charges. But, uh, but you have to find, you know, a sympathetic venue, a sympathetic forum. And I'm not sure that you're going to get that anywhere 
All right, let's see. Uh, look to G says. I'm reading some of the comments in the chat. Look to C says, I feel like I remember something about how Biden was going to unite our country. But when I see how hyperbolic Democratic leadership and Biden's Justice Department has been when speaking about our citizens involved in January 6th, it seems like they may have been overstating just how much interest they had in unifying the country. In fact, it almost seems like they're singling out their political rivals. Yeah, it seems like a lot of that, a lot of their actions have been based around politics not so much about policies. We have Sergeant Bob says, what would Antifa BLM do? Well, they would probably throw some of those uh, peaceful edition Molotov cocktails uh, into the court buildings. We have this, we have some record of this. We have that uh, uh, on record in Portland, Antifa was, I think, firebombing a federal courthouse for months. And they just said, oh, that's no problem because these are peaceful bombs. <laughs> so, you know, that that was one version of a court building. We have a congressional court building, which is the one that we're talking about today. And yeah, you could you could analogize those together. Yeah, I like it, Sergeant Bob. Good question. Uh, another one, Sergeant Bob says no tactical plan by police. Obvious, no tactical plan. Yeah, they just looked like they were standing around kind of uh, just chatting around the water cooler. Jay, he says, so the U.S. Capitol Police is complicit to the crimes being committed committed and they're not held accountable double standard as usual so much for biden's promise to show transparency i'm glad this was made available to the public good call on that jay heath i agree with you and i'd like to see a lot more of this i think there's a lot more evidence that nobody wants to open up because it's going to change the narrative about really what happened that day and again i'm not saying that there wasn't any violence we saw it i covered it the day it happened on january 6 and i didn't like what i saw but I also don't like what I'm seeing where there are a lot of people who are being overly charged and they're being made to be political scapegoats because they don't like Donald Trump. It's not appropriate. That's not what the justice system is for. We have D-Rod says, Rob, the Democrats never Trumpers. They set up Trump and his supporters. The mayor of D.C. didn't ask for, ask for support because they wanted to allow mayhem and chaos to set up Trump and those there. This was all planned and staged. Trump organizing the January 6th protest walks into it. I think there's some truth there, D-Rod. I don't disagree with you. And it was kind of a foolish thing to allow that to happen on your watch. Mustang Jeff says, can you please point out the reason why 1-6 defendants should have been put in the jail in the first place? Well, that's because they were, you know, not Democrats. I mean, they were there at a rally and Something bad happened, no question about it. There were some bad actors and something that was inappropriate did take place. But a big bucket of people got caught up into a narrative that labeled everybody as a bad actor. There was a handful of those people that did bad things, but everybody who was there got bumped up into this new tier of a criminal. Now it's a, a political prisoner in America if you are somebody who speaks against the incoming administration or the narrative. People who were just sort of moseying through the Capitol building have been held in custody for months on end with almost no due process. Wouldn't fly in other places. Certainly flies in D.C. And we've gone through case after case, motion after motion from judges whining and complaining about how horrific this whole thing was, which is why people with no criminal record, many people who were not even there when this happened. We talked about the guy who showed up the day after and got arrested. We talked about the guy who punched somebody on the street the day after and got arrested for it as a January 6th defendant, rounding up everybody because they want to make this into something that it isn't. They had, you know, they were saying that Officer Sicknick was murdered by, by, the, by this for months until, well, no, turns out he wasn't at all. So the whole thing is just a big phony hoax, which is why they are puffing it up. Not the whole thing's a hoax. There are some legitimate prosecutions there, but a lot of these are not. Speech Unleashed says, doesn't look like an insurrection. It looks like an invitation. Peaceful, respectful, welcoming. No wonder they didn't want to release these videos sooner. Yeah, because it's pretty obvious that, that, wasn't, that that's an opposite narrative, what we saw. K-Cell says, 
How did the prosecution present this video? Or was it just released as more evidence? Good, good question, KSL. So this was released as part of the disclosure process. So when you're charged with a crime, remember that the government, they have all the evidence against you. They are the people prosecuting you. And so they're going to have the surveillance footage, the body camera footage. They're going to have the victim statements. If it's a DUI case, for example, they're going to have the blood results. If it's a sexual assault case, they're going to have those results. And the list just goes on and on. And so here, since it's the government, they have all the files. They have hundreds of hours of or thousands of hours of video and they need to disclose stuff. And so we've been complaining about this on our channel for a long time here, specifically talking about the idea that they didn't even start organizing the video stuff. I think until July, we covered this. And then they said, oh, then we, we hired this third party contractor to come in and figure it all out for us. And then they just started working through it. And I'm, I'm sitting here just pulling my hair out wondering how they can just start disclosing the video evidence in July when people have already been in custody for six months. It's nonsense. So this video is just being disclosed now. Finally, the defense attorneys say, uh, before you charge our client with crimes, we need to see the discovery. We need to see what the evidence actually says. And this is just a part of that process. So this hasn't been introduced into, you know, into court as a formal exhibit or in the course of a trial, but it is something that is uh, part of the case's file and, and the, the defense is entitled to see that stuff. A couple more questions here. Come on, Google. There it is. Says uh, John Halgren says the Twitch stream is very nice on my TV and I can still send the form on my phone. That's from John Halgren. Well, that's good feedback, John. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're working some of the kinks out over here. It is a little bit of a like learning to ride a bike again. I've got my, my screens are all disconnected. I don't see the, the YouTube live chat. I'm sort of, you know, broken hearted a little bit. News Now Wyoming says to answer the malicious prosecution quants, answer the answer is 99% of no. I did a video a month ago about how difficult it is for malicious prosecution lawsuits. That's a great point, News Now. It, it really is. Look, like, yes, you can file it, but if the prosecution has even a reasonable basis for bringing it, then they're going to be fine. Three girlies says, wow, this riot was so violent. The cops forgot to fall down and fake an injury. I used to do security. Those cops weren't securing anything. If they really wanted to secure the door. They would have moved the crowd past the door and closed the door. Their body language showed you that they didn't want securing that door in any meaningful way. Physically been in riots. This is nowhere near a riot. It didn't look like that to me. Three girlies. Now I've never been an officer or work security or been in a situation like that, but that did not seem and that went on for about 40 minutes. All right. So a big chunk of time. A little bit different side of things, isn't it? All right. That was from three girlies. Good comment. Another one here. Edon Tess says, I agree with Monster One. Don't dislike this format, but I can't pause this to take a call. It only does live. Not a bad thing, but maybe I'll take some notes and get better feedback after we see how this goes. I will say that if I'm following along on my phone, like when I'm listening in the car, at the locals is not as streamlined, so this might be harder to watch live. That's from Edon Tess. Okay. Yeah, that's really good feedback too. Yeah, and so you could... I'm not trying to exclude YouTube, right? YouTube is a, is a, is a perfectly fine uh, avenue, right? That we're still going to be using YouTube. The problem here that I have is that if I go live on YouTube and I put the whole show on YouTube, then it, it basically stops recommending it as soon as the live stream is over. And so this way, what I wanted to do is record it, then upload it. So it's a video that doesn't get pulled from distribution as soon as the show is over. But I could, now that I think about it, I could set up an unlisted live stream on YouTube so that you could continue to use. I think I can do that. Uh, so I, may, I might do that tomorrow. Good feedback. I'm thinking on the fly. We have a show to do. So stop that, Rob. All right, let's move on. We've got I'm Not Gas says, yeah, I think stre streaming through the unlisted YouTube might be the way to go tomorrow. Bit rate seems low on the locals player. All right, well, that's good feedback. You know, I got to give that back to the locals team. We have former LEO says, no hats and bats. I, it would do any good to supply root gear. Keystone cops, sad, just sad. You do know that 20 real police officers could have controlled the demonstration. That's from former LEO. That's interesting. 20 real police officers could have controlled the demonstration. That's from former LEO. Yeah, well... That's that's an interesting comment. Speech Unleashed says, I feel sorry for all those people that have already taken a plea because these videos could have possibly helped them to not have to. Yeah, that's from Speech Unleashed. 
that that's why you like to see the evidence before you take a plea deal. There's a lot of attorneys that don't follow that simple rule, and I think it's a bad rule. Now, what prosecutors will often do in, in cases like this is they'll say, if you if you demand more out of us, we're going to make the plea deal harsher. Hmm. So in other words, if you want to start actually investigating your case, then we're just going to make things worse for you for making us do more work, like having to give you evidence in the case, which is insanity, but it happens all the time. Uh, Hitler is here. Oh, gosh. Says the Battle of Normandy didn't happen because World War II didn't happen. Uh, well, listen, that's just fake news. Obviously, that's not true. He says, when I was a struggling artist, Rob bought my painting and not Hunter. Struggling artist no more. Happily married two kids to my Jewish wife. Thank you, Rob. Oh, okay. <laughs> There you have it, folks. I altered the course of history. Yeah. So if you recall, I think Adolf was back on the channel yesterday wondering if I'd buy his artwork or Hunter's. And because Hunter is selling his for $500,000, I had no choice. I can't afford that masterpiece of Hunter Biden. And so uh, we, we made a decision last week and averted World War II. You're welcome, world. Look 2G says, we have people interested in doing a convention of the states. Could we add an amendment for more transparency between the government? and civilians if we did one yeah look to g we could <laughs> you know i was listening to nick ricada over the weekend and uh you know he had a really interesting thought he said well yeah we could do a convention of the states but what happens if something bad comes out of that <laughs> And I thought, oh, gosh, that's perfect. That's exactly right. We'd probably come out of there with, you know, universal basic income for everybody. Nobody has to work at all. Everybody has to wear face diapers, you know, indefinitely. <laughs> so you got to be careful what you wish, wish for on that one. We have former LEO says, been there, done that. What an embarrassment for law enforcement. But it does point out how incompetent Capital PD is. That's for former LEO. We have Sergeant Bob says, amen to former LEO's comment. Tactical plan equals good control. That's two for two. We got two Popo in the house, former Popo, and they are uh, confirming Capitol Hill police just, you know, not so good out there. So uh, that, those were great questions and comments over from watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Thank you for all your support. And if you want to join our community, that's the place to do it. A lot of amazing people chatting away over there. We've got Chris Bean here, Ready Freddy. Hip, hip poopies in the house. We have uh, I'm Not Gas, Nadar Blasiers here, Jay Heath, Look 2G. And Skip Money is in the house as well. Good to see you, Skip Money. All right, and so let's take a quick look over on Rumble. Shout out to Rumble. Elucidation Station is here. We have Greasy Inst is here. We have Southern Bix. User1121 and Eric's account are all over on Rumble as well. All right, so we're going to move on to the next segment. All right, so what else do we have here on the show today? And you'll notice that we're running out of time because uh, locals – cuts us off a little bit, but that's okay. These are shorter segments. Chicago Police Department, they are standing firm against the new Chicago vaccine mandates. And in fact, one of the union presidents, the guy who runs the Fraternal Order of Police there out of Chicago, is estimating that more than 3,000 officers are actively outright defying the city's new vaccine reporting mandate. Just saying we're not reporting. How about that? Chicago PD, this story comes over from CBS Chicago, says that there has been a back and forth between the mayor, Lori Lightfoot, we're going to hear from her, and the Chicago Police Union. There's a flurry of emails that went out and memos as the vaccine mandate enters its first full week in effect. That's this week. We have the latest threatening memos that are now being sent out to officers. And so there is this back and forth. Mayor Lori Lightfoot out of Chicago comes out and says, uh, vaccine mandates for everybody and police officers, you in particular, you have to report your status. You have to use this portal and you got to let us know that you've been vaccinated. You got to log in to like a like an account, go in there. Yes, I've been back. Yes, I promise. Yes, I know. But a lot of them didn't. Why not? We just heard 3,000 of them may have decided not going to do that. Well, that's because of this guy. On the Fraternal Order of Police Twitter's account, we're going to look at uh, the, the president of it. He says, a whole lot is going on today, but one thing remains constant. All four of Chicago's law enforcement unions are in agreement. POs, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, all advised to refuse any lawful order to respond to the portal. Okay, this is where they have to report their VAC status. And so this guy, you're going to see, his name is John Catanzara. Catanzara, I think is how you say it. C-A-T-A-N-Zara. And he posted this. You can take a look at this on October 14th. So we're going to play this in a minute. Before we do, I want to show you this video got 20, almost 21,000 views. 
and he's just giving us an update on the portal. So he shared a message and then something interesting happened. Hmm. The city took him to court and they got a judge to tell him, stop making those statements. And the judge signed off on it. No problem at all. Here's that story. At least one, Erica, the judge just issued a temporary restraining order against FOP President John Catanzara, who's now been told he can't make any more public comments, social media posts or videos like we've seen really all this week, asking for members of the FOP, Chicago police officers, not to comply with the city's vaccine mandate that will still be in place. Now all right. So. We have this gentleman, John Catanzara, goes in and tries to make a message to communicate to all of his union members that, hey, you don't have to do these things that they're telling you to do before he can even do anything about it. Judge comes out here on October 15th, this was on Friday, and says there's now an injunction. You can no longer communicate that message on social media anymore. So a judge shut him up as soon as he said it. October 14th, he posts a message. October 15th, judge says, you can't talk about this anymore. So let's take a look at John's message and see what he in fact did say. Here he is. They are saying you still have to respond to the portal by midnight tomorrow night or be subjected to possible discipline in the future, whatever that may be, whenever they determine who complied, who didn't. The new thing seems to be that they are going to have supervisors give direct orders to enter information in the portal. I am telling you right now, it is an improper order. It is illegal. It is the same as the mayor telling you, you have to do it. Refuse that order. Get it on body cam, whether it's from a sergeant, a lieutenant, or a captain, or above, commander included, deputy chief, I don't care if it's Superintendent Brown. If somebody orders you to go into the portal, refuse that order, Document it on body cam if you can. If you cannot, immediately go on the air, get an event number on the zone, give that supervisor's name, star number, and the time you were given that direct order, and we will deal with it from there. This is a clear attempt Whoa. to fracture the four police unions against each other. But I just spoke to all three of the police union's uh, presidents. The sergeants are on board, the lieutenants are on board, and the captains are on board. If anybody gives that order, they 100% are okay with our members doing what they're going to do. And advise that supervisor that they are giving you an improper order and subjected to discipline themselves in the future. Whoa. So he is telling them to basically violate a direct order, saying that their order is unlawful. And if anybody tells you to do that, you call it in, basically. <laughs> you pick it up, call it in, and report it to him. Report it to the Fraternal Order of Police. And he just you heard him say that. They're all in alignment on this, right? All of the other union heads, all of the other presidents, all of the other police departments, agencies are in sync on this thing. And it was very interesting because they were supposed to be, if, if you watch the full clip from John, you'll notice that before he jumped into that, he said specifically, the, the city kind of backtracked a little bit, and I'm not you know super plugged into Chicago politics, but the, the original threat was that when the order went into effect, they were going to be terminated. I think John Halgren and, and other people who are in that you know, part of the country are going through something similar. But the big idea that there was, they were going to be terminated or fired or let go if they didn't comply, but that didn't happen starting today. And he says, okay, so now what the what the sort of the teeth is, they have this new mandate. The teeth is you're, you better do it or you're going to get fired. Now the new teeth, the new set of you know compliance techniques are you have to do it and you have to report it in your portal. So it's not you're going to be terminated. It's just you got to report it. Otherwise, there are going to be consequences for you. One of the consequences was they're going to go in and put the data in on your behalf. And he said, if they even do that, or if they order you to do it, you let us know because it's still an unlawful request. So this goes over now to Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot is uh, this person. You maybe remember her. She's the mayor of Chicago. And uh, when you go over there, uh, you, you'll, you'll, when you see her, you'll notice that uh, she is very pro vaccine mandate, right? Like a lot of the other big city Democrats who are in charge of everything. It's sort of vaccinate or die. It's vaccines at all costs. Nothing else matters. That doesn't matter if their hospitals crumble, if their police departments abandon ship, if firefighters are run out of town. They don't care. It's all about the vaccines. 
And if you are somebody who stands in the way, well, you might be responsible for insurrection. You may be responsible for the downfall of America, the destruction of our democracy, which is the exact argument that Lori Lightfoot made here today. So ask the question of why the lawsuit? Um, because we believe that the FOP leadership is trying to foment an illegal work stop at Kishrek, pure and simple. We've laid that out in the materials, um, and we're not just, we're not having that. The, the contract is clear and it's been known for a long time. Uh, the police unions are not authorized to strike. It's in their collective bargaining agreement and it's a matter of state law. What we've seen from uh, the Fraternal Order of Police and particularly the leadership is a lot of misinformation, a lot of half-truths and frankly flat-out lies in order to induce an insurrection. Um, and we're not having that. And so we want to make it very, very clear um, that the law is on our side. <clears throat> we feel very confident about it. Induce an insurrection. Everything is an insurrection these days. I mean, everywhere you turn, it's like uh, 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 they forgot to include a straw in your to-go bag. Insurrection. So you can see where this is going. So she is very unhappy that there are police officers who are part of unions, which are traditionally something that Democrats favor, that you know, they are now sort of speaking out. They are standing up and not complying. That is, I guess insurrection now. So that's Lori Lightfoot. So unhappy that there are still 3000 officers who have decided that they're not going to comply. Her office and the rest of the other bureaucrats in Chicago sent out some memos. You know how often uh, these things are effective. Two memos have been sent out since Friday. The latest comes on Sunday. This is what Lori Lightfoot sent out, says there are consequences for officers if they don't follow the city of Chicago's vaccination policy. Any such officers will become the subject of a disciplinary investigation that could result in a penalty up to and including separation from the Chicago Police Department. Memo goes on to say, so basically termination, right? Penalty, disciplinary, you're going to be fired. It's just a memo. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet. Memo says that sworn members of the department who retire while under investigation may be denied retirement credentials. Uh-oh. So that means... You don't collect, you know, whatever you're due there. On Saturday, another memo went out saying days off now require approval from a deputy chief or above. And certainly they're going to ask about your VAC status. No question about that. CPD hasn't said if this is related to the ongoing tension between the police union and Lori Lightfoot over the city's vaccine mandate. But as, as of now, union is not budging. We just heard from him. Said our moniker all week has been hold the line for a reason. Union has sued the city over the mandate, seeking to force the city to engage in arbitration. And so that is what John had to say. So John was, was uh, we heard from him earlier, came out and said specifically, uh, don't, don't take it. Judge came out and said, or, or didn't say don't take it, right? Let's be clear about this. He said, don't report it using the portal. My presumption is, is he doesn't really have a particular opinion on whether or not you voluntarily go and choose to do it. He doesn't like the compliance, the mandate, mandating of the vaccine by this uh, uh, bureaucrat. So he goes out, makes his statement. Court comes out, tells them, you're not allowed to talk about this anymore. You are now cut off. And uh, Lori Lightfoot had some choice words for John, John Contazaro. Let's take a listen and see what she had to say. And what he, what he said, even after uh, what I heard that he said, even after um, the lawsuit was filed and we notified them, is urging members of the department to ignore their chain of command. And let me be very clear about this. John Cantazaro has destroyed his police career, destroyed it. He's not fit, and he's never going to go back to um, the department in any kind of active position. I don't want him to, to lead these young officers astray and have them destroy their careers like he's destroyed his. All right. So she kind of let him have it a little bit. This was earlier, uh, I believe, in the day today. And so John took a listen to that and has another message for Lori. This is what he said. Saw this right before we hopped on here. Policy stuff. Oh, my goodness. That is really loud. Let me turn that down. Policy starts at the top in this city. And it has proven time and time again that the top of this city's policy needs to change. With that being said, enough is enough. 
All right, so he's running for mayor. He's going to challenge Lori Lightfoot, which is, of course, just fun stuff. Let's see if there's any questions on, on uh, <laughs> Red Watching the Watchers .locals.com. I think I just blew out everybody's speakers on that. Uh, let's see. That was from uh, we got Tweak over there, Skip Money. We've got Bittersweet saying louder, please. Yeah, the audios are all just messed up today, but it's that's what happens when you make a change. You know, it's like your first day back at the gym. It's like I don't remember how to do any of this stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna continue to to move through it. Let's see if there's any questions over from watching the watchers locals dot com. Couple more here. Okay, so uh, former LEO says on this segment, where is the ACLU when you need them? It's a good question. They're busy suing. Uh, I, I was going to cover a story with the ACLU. What are they suing over right now? They're suing for something ridiculous. Nancy Pelosi's fun bags is here, says Chirac is a mess. Are you only going to be considered vaxxed when you get boosters now? Like, when is it going to stop? That's from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Nadler is here, says Beetlejuice seems to rule with an iron fist. The police union chief said he has plans for running against her. And for the mayor, yeah, we just covered that. Sergeant Bob says, CPD union, very strong for years. Lightfoot picking the wrong hill to, to die on. This is one of the reasons why unions have a place. That was from Sergeant Bob. We have KK, Khaleesi K, says, the Twitch fam wants you to start gaming and stream on Twitch. LOL, also look on Twitch to get the bits, the monetary Twitch funds. We are the degenerates of the watching the watchers. You know, I just downloaded a new game, uh, my Twitch friends. Uh, what's it called? Oh, Rift Breaker. It looks really fun. It looks like a cross between Factorio and um, Dyson Sphere program, which I happen to love because I'm kind of a geek like that. Maybe I'll, I'll try out Rift Breaker over on Twitch at some point. We have, let's see. KK says, by the way, there are about 11 to 13 of us on Twitch. That's great. That's a, that's a ton of people. I had no idea. <laughs> that's amazing. Speech Unleashed says, uh, hi, Twitch. Speech Unleashed says, I think all of those police officers should go into the portal and answer every question with Let's Go Brandon. Just like a California police officer said, Let's Go Brandon over the loudspeaker in his patrol car. <laughs> Nadarb said in the chat, ACLU is su yeah, suing, that's right, uh, over the gender stuff. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, I think they're suing over, was it Loudoun County? Is that is that what it is? Good question. I'm not gas says, why does it seem like only the unions that fight for their members are police unions? All the man manufacturing teachers unions seem to be nothing more than political grift machines. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody, not me, could say, well, that's kind of what police unions do. Could have said that, but I didn't say that because we have Sergeant Bob and former LEO in the house. We have to be respectful to them. I'm not gas says. Is Lori Lightfoot related to the frequent Howard Stern guest, Beetlejuice? Probably. I think they're cousins. We have Sergeant Bob says, if FOP President John could somehow get the podium, we would be good. Yeah, he's speaking up for a lot there, and I appreciate that. Former LEO says, we took a strike vote, and 900 patrol officers told the shitty city to shove it. Mayor found a new word to use, but somebody should explain to her what it means. Talking about Lori Lightfoot, I think. John Halgren says, this will end with her resignation. Write that down. The cops affect affectionately call her Groot. Write that down too. <laughs> Groot from uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Sergeant Bob says, CPD officers are not stupid. Fired? Hundreds of cities would hire them in a heartbeat. Many jurisdictions cannot attract enough applicants. CPD officers have experience. Maybe Phoenix, Scottsdale, and Mesa for a start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, you know, 3,000 police officers without a job in Chicago means you've got a big crime problem, I think. Let's see. Monster One says, sorry, Rob, have to head out. Tried locals. Audio sounds like two robots making love. <laughs> I tried rumble. Lags every three seconds. Twitch was even worse. It's really messing up the routine. I listen from you to seven to the end and head over to Tim Pools. That usually gets me to quitting time at work. One of the biggest reasons why I joined locals was the interactivity during live shows. Well, I'm sorry it's not working out, Monster One. It's, it's only going to be for today. I'm going to upload this same video to YouTube after the fact, and uh, hopefully you can catch it then. But tomorrow, we're going to work out the kinks on this thing. I tried it didn't work thought I had it all figured out 
obviously I didn't. And you know, part of the other issue is that there's a lot of different use cases, right? People use things differently. And I didn't think about all the different permutations of how people use stuff. So I appreciate it. I know it's super frustrating. I know that there's probably a lot of you are like, oh, this idiot, why is he changing stuff up? I had a routine. I know exactly where the show is. I had to get to it. And you might abandon me, which is, I understand that. I mean, it breaks my heart, but I understand that. I understand getting so mad. You just say, cancel, bye, gone, I'm out of here. I hope you come back, but this is a temporary change. We're just trying to get our bearings straight. We're going to get all the kinks worked out. We're going to be back. It, the show is going to be better, but I know it, you know, sometimes it hurts a little bit. We have Speech Unleashed says, since the mayor is basically calling the police liars, can a defense attorney use that to undermine the testimony of police officers in their criminal cases? After all, she is blatantly calling the police officers liars. Yeah, and she's calling them insurrectionists, I mean, which is the, the worst thing that you can be called today because it sort of means you're a traitor and treasonous and you know what the penalty for that is it's not good so could a defense attorney go in on a criminal case and say uh your honor this officer should be disqualified because Lori lightfoot said that the police officers are insurrectionists so throw the officer out and dismiss the case i like it speech but it wouldn't work you'd need something Definitely more on point, something specific to this particular officer, like this officer uh, did something that violated a particular protocol that justifies exclusion of that officer's testimony in a case because they are too uh, dishonest, right? Their credibility, they've got something that impacts their, their, their morality to some degree. And a general blanket statement from the mayor, I don't think would carry enough credibility. Let's see. We have former LEO says, can you say union busting? The FOP should get aligned with every union in Chicago. Beetlejuice is at it again. That's from former LEO. We have Geomancy Games says, please look into King County here in Washington. I'm covering it on my YouTube channel, but it's insanity. King County in Washington. It's not ringing a bell. Uh, MAGA says that Lightfoot looks like Beetlejuice. We have Soul Viking says Miss Lightfoot statements will only further demoralize those in city service. Not good in today's precarious times with so many other mandates. It's weird. You know, it's weird in the middle of a global pandemic of an emergency of this size that people in charge have no problem firing airline pilots and nurses and doctors and firefighters and police officers and the list goes on and on it's no problem all of the essential service people that were essential last year they're all expendable now essential to expendable very weird how that happened uh, i don't get it but we have another one from Lori bigfoot says i stubbed my toe on one of my romantic late night walks to the fridge Ugh. joey bandolero says people found input fields in the source code of canada's vax pass portal for eight doses Oh, this is never going to end. So I was saying that like there's like it's like when you go to the sandwich shop and every time you need to uh, clip to get your, you got to, you, know, you buy a sandwich, you get a click, click it, click it. Ten sandwiches free. It's sort of like that with the boosters, I think, is what you're saying, which is weird. We have uh, Bernie Sanders says, Robbie, I love you. That's nice, Bernie. Thanks. Sergeant Bob says, everyone, be patient with Rob. He's doing this with a lot of his non billable time. He's going to make it right doesn't have a highly paid staff to do it you're right sergeant bob it's just me sort of flailing around with all this tech and all of this uh live streaming stuff i'm trying to do my best i know i'm going to screw stuff up but i took i took advice of some people who uh who really know what they're doing and they said that i need to i need to figure this out and so part of what part of how i do things in life is i don't try to overanalyze too much otherwise you get paralysis by analysis and nothing ever gets done so what i've been trying to do is just keep pushing 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 when i'm off a little bit i make a course correction it's not the end of the world had a bad show today gonna have bad shows in the future but it's just you know it's just something that is going to take some some tweaking here and there and i appreciate all of your patience on it i know that it is frustrating all right we've got one uh let me wrap that up those great questions came over from watching the watchers .locals .com. Okay. We've got one final segment on the day. Then I'm going to edit everything and upload it to YouTube and things will be better tomorrow. I promise. But before we, we do, we have to ruin the rest of your afternoon with Kamala Harris. That's right. We're going to talk about Kamala here. No cackles in this one. Vice president Kamala Harris 
put together a video that was then spread around over 300 churches all around Virginia. It was a political message. Some people might say it was a biblical message. Other people might say it was a naked political endorsement, something that violates all sorts of federal laws. You can be the judge of this. It was first brought to my attention by Eva McKen. She's a national reporter over at CNN. Proud alum, native New Yorker. She posted this on October 16th, a couple days ago, said more than 300 black churches across Virginia are going to hear from Kamala Harris between Sunday, which was yesterday, and November 2nd in a video message that's going to air during morning services as part of an outreach effort aimed to boost Terry McAuliffe. And you go, oh, that's weird. 300 churches, 300 churches, churches are traditionally 501c3 nonprofits, right? They're not supposed to be epicenters of political activity. And yes, there are political things that happen in churches. You're talking about morality and ethics and a lot of very important concepts there. But you're not supposed to sort of go in there and say, uh, we endorse Donald Trump. Jesus endorses Donald Trump. God endorses Donald Trump, right? If, if something like that happened, that would be a big problem. Or here in Arizona, if Donald Trump came into everybody's church and said, I endorse Governor Doug Ducey, a Republican, or something similar happened in your home state, people would naturally go, well, that's, that's not really a, all that appropriate. A 501c3 nonprofit is not supposed to be a naked political establishment. You can talk about morality and ethics in church without necessarily connecting it directly to a political organization. But here, that's not what's happening, is it? It sounds like Kamala Harris is actually endorsing a particular candidate. Well, we're going to watch the video in a quick minute, but let's look at the law first and see if this helps us analyze anything. U.S. Code 501, uh, you, you all hear this, Section 501C3. Well, we have that right here. It's exemption from tax. This means that if you are organized this way, your entity does not have to pay any taxes. Here is the list of exempt organizations. So this is C3, 501C3. And you're going to notice here it says that anything that's organized or operated exclusively for religious, see that right there, religious purposes, and which does not participate in. So if, if you read the rest of the statute, it's just basically uh, a lot of permutations of the same concept, but a religious organization that is formulated for the purpose of carrying on religious activities and which does not participate in or intervene in, including the publishing or the distributing of statements like a video, any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office. See that right there, underlined in red? So if you're a religious church and you don't participate and do any of those political things, guess what? You're good. You don't have to be taxed. You are a qualified, exempt organization that is codified under 501c3. But you can't participate in any political campaign on behalf of any candidate for public office. That's pretty clear. Oftentimes we read rules here on this show and it's really hard to understand what they're talking about. But that seems pretty clear to me. And when you go over to the IRS, you can also see that the IRS is not happy about this. They tell you under 501c3, organizations are absolutely prohibited from directly or indirectly participating in any political campaign on behalf of any candidate for elective public office contributions to political campaigns or funds made on behalf of an organization clearly violate the prohibition against campaign activity, political campaign activity. Violating this prohibition may result in denial or revocation of tax exempt status and the imposition of certain excise taxes. So what they're saying is, hey, 501c3 uh, organization, uh, hey, churches out there, if you violate this by engaging in political campaign activity, by hosting a statement from somebody who is out there pontificating on somebody else on behalf of their campaigns, well, that is a big no-no. And if you do it, you can lose your tax-exempt status. And in fact, you have to make, pay taxes on top of that. Are these churches aware of that? Certain activities now and expenditures may not be prohibited. For example, certain voter education activities like a public forum or a voter education guide 
as long as it's conducted in a nonpartisan manner and does not constitute prohibited political activity, well, then it's okay. But anything else, not okay. On the other hand, voter education or registration that has evidence of bias that favors one candidate over another, like Terry McAuliffe, or opposes another candidate in some manner, or favors a group of candidates will constitute prohibited public intervention. Right off the IRS's website. Not even complicated. Very clear. So now we can listen to Kamala Harris. And she spoke for about two minutes. This is the same message that is being spread throughout all the various churches around the country. Uh, we're going to listen to her in two clips. First clip. That's maybe not so bad. Let's see what it says. Here's Kamala. Greetings, everyone. So when I was growing up, we sang in the choir at Oakland's 23rd Avenue Church of God. We sang hymns about how faith combined with determination will see us through difficult times. And we were taught that it was our sacred responsibility to raise our voice and lift up the voices of our community. One of the most significant ways I believe that we can each use our voice is through our vote. So Virginians, you have the opportunity now to raise your voice through your vote, because it's election time. As you know, this is an important election coming up on Tuesday, November 2nd, and early voting is already underway. All right, so if you are, if you are listening over on Locals, the sound on the video clips is not working. Go over to Rumble. I'm going to fix that for tomorrow. But uh, what she said is... Uh, nothing really substantive. Uh, voting's coming up. I'm a governor. A governor race is happening. I grew up. Uh, we, we lift up our voices by engaging in a dialogue, all of that stuff. The point, she didn't mention anything in particular about a particular candidate or a campaign or anything other than just, you know, early voting's underway. It's good to go vote. And uh, you should do that, right? Very general stuff, stuff that maybe you wouldn't even find anything reprehensible there. It's what we just read in the rule. Very generic, very bland, go vote. It's good to participate in American democracy. All the same garbage you hear from politicians all the time. But that was only the first half of the statement. Let's see what is next. I believe that my friend Terry McAuliffe is the leader Virginia needs at this moment. Terry McAuliffe has a long track record of getting things done for the people of Virginia. When he was governor, in the wake of the recession, you'll remember, he brought 200,000 jobs to Virginia. What? Incomes went up and unemployment went down in every city and county in the state. And now, Terry McAuliffe is stepping up again with a clear vision about how to rebuild Virginia's economy for the future to raise the minimum wage, to make health care more affordable, to give every child a world-class education. Virginians, you deserve a leader who has a vision of what is possible and the experience to realize that vision. Terry McAuliffe is that leader. Whoa. In 2020, more Virginians voted than ever before, and because you did, you helped send President Joe Biden and me to the White House. This year, I know that you will send Terry McAuliffe back to Richmond. So early voting has already- All right, you get the gist of it. So that's Kamala. So she's out there directly communicating to voters on behalf of a political candidate in a particular race. And that feels like it might be in violation of the 501c3 non-exemption rules. Ooh, okay. Well, CNN is confirming that more than 300 black churches are, in fact, going to hear that. She called it a sacred responsibility. She specifically pointed out Terry McAuliffe saying he's got a long track record. And this is the election. This is the first year that in Virginia they're going to be able to vote on a Sunday. Isn't that interesting? Sunday voting. And they're getting messages from Kamala Harris from on high. Now, that's not really that good news for uh, Terry McAuliffe because we know that most people don't listen to Kamala. She went down to Guatemala and said, don't you come to the United States. And guess what? More than ever are here. So it might actually work in reverse for Terry McAuliffe. I guess we're going to have to see, see what happens with that election. Let's see if there are any questions on this over from watching the watchers .com. Let's see if we have any thoughts on... Uh, 
Miss Kamala over here. Couple questions. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at some of the, they came in on a prior segment. I'm not sure why these are coming in later. Let's see what else we have. Sergeant Bob is here, says no paid child actors. Not in that clip. Yeah, hopefully hopefully she doesn't add any in the churches or anything like that. It's kind of weird. Kamala Harris says, come on, Rob. I'm the VP. I can do no wrong. Got to run. Joe just pooped his diaper. Oh, it's disgusting. Edon Tess says, not a bad show. Just some glitches. That is to be expected. Not a reflection on you. You'll get it worked out. Well, that's really nice of you, Edon Tess, because, you know, I can be pretty hard on myself with these things. But I also... I also understand that there are going to be hiccups from time to time, and I appreciate that. Robute says, since when did federal law apply to the politically connected and powerful unless the conduct is so egregious and publicized that others need to get rid of them? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's on point, Robute. I think I think that there's there's a lot there. They're trying to get rid of a lot of different messaging, and if they don't like the message, if they can't get rid of the message, then they try to get rid of the messenger. It's not good. Speech Unleashed says, Biden signs unconstitutional executive orders. Saki endorses a politician during her press release. Kamala hires kid actors to make her appear likable. This administration is a big hot mess from start to finish. Not surprised they would choose to violate another rule like this. Yeah, it's like, what are you going to do about it? Who's going to do anything about this? Republicans? <laughs> they don't care. And remember, they were skewing, skewering Donald Trump over the same concept. This is called the Johnson Amendment, that amendment that you read there, that last part on the 501c3. It was the idea that if you are political in a church, that's a problem. Donald Trump was, did not like that rule. He wanted that gone. He wanted you to be able to be as political as you could. and Basically get rid of that so that you could go into churches and say whatever you wanted. And there wouldn't be any repercussions. It wouldn't impact your 501c3 status. When Donald Trump said that, that he was going to get rid of the Johnson Amendment, Democrats and people all across the media were hyperventilating. Oh, he's going to bring back politics into, uh, into our churches, and he's going to take advantage of this. And the Christian right out there, you know, all of the people in the southern states are going to just be commandeered by the sacrilegious Republicans and all this stuff. Got it. Well... That never actually happened. Donald Trump didn't get rid of that. Nothing changed on this. And now the Democrats are using it as though it doesn't exist. And they're not even upset about it. They're just kind of uh, naked and transparent about it. Yoda's here says Kamala should stay in her lane, the do nothing lane. That's the one that she's good at. We have former LEO says looks like free money for turning in any church that violates 501 C three, get a bounty from the IRS. Well, there's a list of about, 300 of them that uh, might be on cue. Look 2G says, it doesn't surprise me that Kamala doesn't understand the law. Well, uh, have you heard Judge Joe Brown explain her story? It's explicit. Uh, I've not heard Joe Brown explain it, but I've read a lot about it. She's not, uh, not great. Let's see if we have some other questions here. Sergeant Bob says, violation of the USC, clear as you said, if President Trump did this, Merrick the Gladiator would be all over it. They would be flipping out. People would be losing their collective minds if Donald Trump went in there and started uh, communicating. <laughs> Sergeant Bob says, I sent my lunch for recycling in the first five seconds. I know I, I warned everybody that Kamala was going to be on the show, but I know sometimes even a warning won't help. Soul Viking says, I'm sure that Kamala sang the loudest, just like the old proverb says. God help us. We have another question. It says, I've seen... A more fake, I've never seen a more fake individual and terrible actress, blasphemy. And we know where those types end up. No name on that one over from locals. A couple more before we wrap this up. John Halgren says, they will sidestep the church aspect of this very easily. They will conclude the sermon and then merely declare that they are having a public meeting or a gathering not associated with the church. It's just like pastors stepping from behind the pulpit. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's from John Halgren. Yeah, but it's also just a video message, John, that they're just playing. And like, is it going to happen? It just seems so obvious to me. It's like, um, you know, I'm Catholic and we do the song, stand up, sit down, song, walk, shake hands, you know, uh, the whole thing. <laughs> if you're Catholic and you and you go to mass, you know what I'm talking about. Up, down, up, down, up, down, kneeling, up, down. Right. And and if they played a video like that in the middle of mass, I think that that would be. Pretty obviously a, a violation of 
for the 501c3s. We have uh, Jeremy says, uh, Rob, when I watch the playback on Rumble, I'm, I'm able to ask questions via Google Docs. You still manage to get to my questions in on the show. It amazes me. Although it could be that I already asked a question before and just forgot. All joking aside, win a few, lose a few. Failing is still progress. Hope you had a great weekend. I did, Jeremy. I hope you did too. I got a lot of stuff situated around the office and, and sort of in my life in general. So that's very good. Going to be a lot more productive now that a lot of things are settled. Uh, Greg Marat says, unrelated, but will you be going to Brandon Tatum's book launch? No, I didn't even know he had one. He's, he's here, I think, right around the corner from me. But I didn't know that that was a thing. Maybe I'll have to look them up. I think that him and uh, Charlie Kirk are also like local people, I think. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, it's a good question, Greg. Didn't know that he had that. Uh, Sweet Potato, a.k.a. Immortal Cutie, says, Rob, tell people to come to Twitch. The chat feature is Mo Beta, and we have an emoji of you, which obviously we need. Since you're trying new things, we want you to game and talk politics. I just don't know how to do Twitch. Like, I really don't know how to, like, people, like, like, you want to watch me play a game and rant about the political state of affairs? I mean, I can make that happen. Yeah, I can rant. I can talk all day about that stuff as I'm decimating enemies on a computer screen. I might have to check it out. Now, I have to find time to do that. But uh, it sounds fun, sweet potato. Potato. D-Rod says, first off, I'm surprised that the walls of the church didn't collapse at the moment K Mala walked in. She was the mistress of Willie in San Fran, who helped her career. She attended mayoral events with Willie and his wife. Really rich, letting Kamala say she was a choir girl. <laughs> That's from D-Rod. Yeah, it's hilarious. Uh, Kirsten Cinema's here. Says, hey, Rob, you're looking sexy. Well, you know what I think sexy, Kirsten? The filibuster. I appreciate you upholding it. Well done. <laughs> uh, former LEO says, how about the John Lewis funeral? I don't remember that one. Yeah, I remember I remember he died, but I don't remember the funeral. Jigum Jigum says, with such a corrupt justice system and media, what recourse do we have? We need a John Honeyman. I'm not sure who that is there. We have Look2G says, Rob, I just want to say how much we love the show and appreciate all your great work. We hope that you get the right combination that's right for, me, for you. I'm sure Will and many more will be following you no matter what combination of platforms you decide to use that's from look 2g well that's very nice look 2g you know and listen i appreciate that right and, and a big part of what why all of this has been successful is because of the feedback it's because of the the trials the tweaks the changes that we've made if you haven't been with us for a long time we, we've made so many changes i can't even tell you like this is like the fourth different recording setup different background that i've had in like the last six or seven months and so we're always changing stuff and a big part of the reason for the changes is because I am sort of I have a big part of my life and an entirely different reality, right? On on sort of in this world, it's online, it's the digital world, it's you know bits and data and live streams and online digital communities, and it, it requires you know content production and time and a big part of my day. But I also have an entire law firm, and we've got a, an amazing team of people and amazing clients that we're trying to help, and so I am sort of you know, building this law firm in a way that will make me redundant to some degree, right? I don't necessarily need to be involved in all of the day-to-day -day stuff over there. I, I really need to start building some systems out. And then a lot of what happens there, mechanically speaking, will run based upon you know, the experience that I have with the rest of our team building these systems out. But I'm sort of transitioning, right? And I've got one foot in this world and one foot in this world. And I'm trying to, you know, mature both of these projects together. And it's, it's a lot of juggling things around a little bit. And so right now, part of the reason for this change is because I'm trying to, to make my workflow a little bit more efficient so that I can actually produce more, right? Actually create more because a lot of my time is being sort of bogged down, being pulled in multiple different directions. And so I'm, I'm going to keep making uh, tweaks. I know it's going to be a little bit frustrating, but I appreciate those of you who sort of, you know, stick with us as we go through all of this. We have uh, three more questions before we wrap up. Just a couple minutes left. Uh, Rand Paul says, you remind me of me, which is great. I like Rand. Sweet Potato says, yes, that's what Twitch is for, silly goose. We watch you shoot and build stuff and talk. All right. Well, that sounds fun. <laughs> KK Khaleesi says, the whole point of Twitch is to play games and rant and do it. Well, I got to be careful. I have a law license out there, you know, so I got to <laughs> got to be careful about some of the rants. But, you know, I'm a pretty mellow fella. So that, that sounds pretty fun. That sounds good. <laughs> Looking at the chat and the Darb says Rob's transitioning. 
yeah, this is the first week. Yeah, we're going through. It's going to I mean, it's going to be a whole new person when you come back. <laughs> All right, my friends, those were great questions over from watching the watchers locals dot com and we've got just a few minutes left over on locals before our clock runs out and so we're going to wrap it up there I want to welcome some new people who joined the community i have not updated this today as i was skidding in here so we'll have a fresh board tomorrow but last week sovereign lion lynn fish germs sniper 275 lao patricia paula revere hsdnp ty live and maxim unbridled form avia tricks burnt to a crisp and let's be fair We'll get all those updated tomorrow. Thank you for everybody for your support. And if you're looking for our next monthly meetup, check that out. Saturday, November 6, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com, which is where this live show took place. And so if you want to be a part of our community, it is at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We have a lot of fun there. Final shout outs to everybody over there in the live chat. Shout out to everybody who's watching the replay over on YouTube and elsewhere throughout the world. Thank you everybody for all of your love and support. We are going to be back here, same time, same place tomorrow to do it all again. And Tomorrow, we're going to have less technical glitches because we have a different solution in mind. Thank you for all your feedback, all your support, all your patience on this show as we continue to navigate these waters. We are going to be back here, same time, same place, for the live show. It's at 4 p.m. Arizona time on Locals, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, and for that one Florida man. Everybody else, have a tremendous evening. Sleep very well. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.